How's it going, y'all? The one video I've been requested more so than any other one has been a security video for Synology NAS. And so that's what this is going to be. But first off, I'm going to show you the one guaranteed way that you can ensure that your NAS never gets hacked into. So you just take your NAS and you take a pair of pliers and you cut the network cable off. That is the only way you can guarantee that nobody will ever be able to hack into your NAS. All right, so obviously it does not make any sense to cut the network cable off your NAS because if you don't have the network cable, your NAS becomes essentially useless. It's network attached storage. But that shows the one truth of computer security. If it is connected to a network that can access the internet, it can be hacked. Fundamentally, all of computer security is just about making it really hard to break into. But if somebody has enough resources, and I'm talking huge government-wide resources, they can break into anything connected to the internet. And that's why when you talk about computer security, what you talk about is how safe is safe enough and not how do we make this bulletproof. All right, so for this video, I've got it set up where there's basically gonna be three different sections for three different user groups. One, users who just don't need to access their NAS remotely. Two, users who can use a VPN to access everything they need. And the third user group are those who really do need to open up ports for different services, and we're gonna go over how to do that safely. Then I'm gonna end with just some general security things that you should do on your NAS, no matter who you are or what you're doing. All right, and so before we start off, I've got to add one additional caveat. We are only going to be talking about virtual security. There's not going to be any physical security talked about in this. And so the two physical vulnerabilities that a NAS has is one, obviously, if somebody physically steals the NAS, you need to make sure the drives are encrypted if you don't want somebody to take the data. And I've got a video on that that I'll put in the description. And two, if they can break into your network. So this could be as simple as somebody guessing your Wi-Fi password. So make sure you have a strong Wi-Fi password because if they can break into your network, they're going to have a lot more access to the different things behind it because people within the network are going to be trusted when it comes to Synology. That's not saying that they have immediate access to your NAS, but if they are on a local network, they're going to have an easier time using vulnerabilities to get into your NAS. But I'm not going to be talking about those two cases in this video. All right, and so now on to our three user groups. All right, so our first user group are those who just do not need to access their NAS outside of their local network. This is by far the most secure, and it's really easy to set up. Though, as I said earlier, it's not perfect. A computer could still get a virus on the network and use that to break into your NAS. But that is very unlikely to happen. All right, so I would recommend being in this group if you're not super tech savvy, and if you really just don't need external access to your NAS. All right, so for the maximum security, this is really easy to set up. Just go ahead and go into control panel, and we're gonna start with Quick Connect. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure to uncheck Enable Quick Connect, and hit Apply. This way, no traffic can come into your network through Quick Connect. Then you're gonna to wanna to go into External Access, and under router configuration, you're going to want to make sure that every single one of these is not checked. And I would recommend disabling universal plug and play on your router. To do that, you're going to have to Google disable universal plug and play and the name of your router. Finally, the last thing you need to do is just check and make sure that no ports have been forwarded from your router to your Synology. So the way you do that is you have to log into your router. And so just Google check port forwarding and the name of your router. And just make sure that no ports are forwarded from the router to the IP address of your Synology. If you've not set up Quick Connect, this should not have happened anyway, but it's good to check. All right, and so just like that, those are the basics of what you need to do. At the end of the video, I'll go in and add some additional security tips just for everyone. But for users who don't need to access their Synology from outside of their network, this setup is by far the most secure. All right, and so now let's talk about users who do need to be able to access their Synology from outside their network. Being able to access your Synology from outside your network is one of the reasons why you buy a Synology. It is great being able to have your files anywhere in the world and allows you to do things like backup tasks. So by completely blocking all access to your Synology outside your network, you're really decreasing the functionality for a lot of people. 
And so if you just want to be able to access your files and things like that from outside of your network, it's a great idea to just set up a VPN server. A VPN server will allow you to securely connect back to your home network using an encrypted connection and it is a tried and true method. They are designed with security in mind. And so by having a VPN connection, you're going to be able to access all of your assets locally and still have a very strong encrypted connection that is going to be very hard from an outside threat to break into. And Synology has a built-in VPN server. I've got a tutorial on how to set up an open VPN server on your Synology NAS, so I'll go ahead and link that in the description below. And then you can simply use that to access all of your assets locally, such as SMB or even Synology DSM. And User Group 2 is still going to have the utmost security. VPNs are very hard to break into, though theoretically not impossible. All right, and so now there's finally Group 3. Group 3 are people who need to be able to open up ports on their Synology. Fundamentally, there are a lot of applications for this. Mail servers, hyper backup, and a bunch of things like that where it just does not make any sense to have to go through a VPN for everything. Now this can still be done securely, but you really need to make sure that you're thinking about every single port you open up. So first off, if you're in this user group, you need to be somewhat tech savvy. You really need to understand what every single port you're opening up does and why you need to open it up, and to make sure that that protocol you're exposing to the internet is designed to be exposed to the internet. You should never open up something like an SMB port to the internet because fundamentally it is just not designed to be like that. So this user group can still have a very secure NAS, but you really need to follow some security guidelines that I'm gonna lay out here. And I'm also gonna have some additional ones at the end of this video. All right, so first off, I would highly recommend setting up a reverse proxy if you're gonna do this. This not only limits the amount of ports you have to open up on your router, but it also limits how those ports can be accessed. Meaning people can't just ping your IP address and get to all the different ports. They're actually going to have to send the exact host name, which is a great front line of defense. Then when you're setting up that reverse proxy, I would really look at buying your own domain name and using that instead of Synology.me, which is free. The reason I wouldn't recommend using Synology.me unless you really have to is the fact that I can look up a list of every single Synology.me using DNS and its IP address. Then I know every single one of those IP addresses on the other line is a Synology. So say there's a vulnerability that's found on Synology. I could then quickly grab that Synology.me list that has every single Synology listed out there that I know all lead to Synologies and then try that exploit on every single one of them quickly and easily. Exploits that work on every single NAS are very rare, but it's an easy way to make yourself a much larger target than you need to be. However, if I use my own custom domain name, the adversary is not going to know that you've got a Synology behind there without a lot more prying. And so it's a really quick and easy way to kind of disguise yourself. The next setup I would really recommend having is to set up two-factor authentication at least for every single admin account if you're going to be exposing DSM to the internet. This way, even if your username and password are known, they still need that authentication passcode to get into your NAS. It's a really good last line of defense to make sure that your NAS is a lot harder to break into. And I've got a video on that that I'll link in the description below. All right, and so that's it for the specific user group three settings that I'm gonna go over. Now I'm just gonna go over general security practices that all groups should probably look at, especially those in group three. So first off of general security practices is make sure to disable your admin account out of the box. Both Synology and QNAP NASes have had massive data breaches because of the default admin account. So default out of the box, it used to be that there was a default admin with a default password. That is a big security vulnerability as I can just go through a list of every single Synology and try and see if that admin username and password would work. And so because of that, recent versions of DSM, when you set it up, have that admin account disabled by default. But we're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's disabled and make sure you do not enable it. 
So to do that, go into Control Panel, Users, and right here in Admin, make sure it's disabled. And it's not a bad idea to actually change this password. Make sure to change this password to something you know, because there are still some fields such as SSH that you could still get into. So it's good to still have that be a different password. All right, and so now let's talk about SSH. Unless you really know what you're doing and you're basically a security expert, under no circumstance should you open up the port 22 or any other SSH port through your router. That is a horrible idea and is a big security vulnerability. So if you do not need SSH, I would just go ahead and make sure it's disabled. However, I use SSH all the time, so I've got it enabled. Another security best practice that I don't necessarily conform to because I've got my firewall set up well, is to change this SSH port. That way, just in case your router's firewall somehow fails and they start pinging port 22 for SSH, it will at least be different. So number three on our list is gonna be set up an auto block. So under security, account, set up auto block. All right, so auto block is basically exactly what you think it is. It's any time that an IP address gets a password wrong X number of times in a row within X number of minutes here, it will block that IP address. So if somebody were to try to log in 10 different times within five minutes from the same IP address, my Synology would automatically block that IP address. Then if it becomes an issue, you can set up a auto block expiration. And honestly, if you set this to like 10 days, most adversaries who are just trying to guess passwords will not have a memory of 10 days. They will just move on. I don't have that enabled because I really don't need it. And then you can also enable account protection and the defaults for these are pretty good. And it works very similar to auto block, except it's mostly based off of user profiles. And so if I've got 15 different IP addresses, I can't just keep guessing from different IP addresses. It will automatically block any time I guess a username too many times. And it's designed to be minutes later. So if somebody guesses my username 10 times, I'm not blocked out for weeks. Instead, I'm only blocked out for about 30 minutes which is enough time for the attacker to probably try another computer. And just go ahead and hit apply. The next thing, if you're accessing your NAS remotely, make sure to use SSL. And I've got a tutorial on that I'll leave in the description. And so next, we're also gonna go into security. Instead of your logout timer, I've got it to 500 minutes because I'm always on a trusted computer basically for this. But if you're something on a public computer, it's a good idea to have a logout timer automatically and you're going to want to check these next few boxes, unless you're using iframe or unless it starts to break your site. Basically, these all help the overall security of your site. All right, and so now let's talk about accounts and account passwords. You really want to have as few administrators as possible on your Synology. If you've got something like friends who need to access it, set them up an account, but do not make them an administrator you really want to minimize the number of admin accounts. The next tip is make sure to only give accounts the access that they need. Say you've got a friend who you want to be able to access a certain shared folder. Great, just give them read write to that one folder and block them from all other ones. This not only is just good practice for your friend, but it also makes sure that if your friend's account gets compromised, then that the attacker can only affect that one folder. Another important thing is have really strong passwords, especially on the admin accounts. If you go under users and advanced, you can actually force your password strength rules and even set up a password expiration. This is really good if you've got something like an actual company running off of this. You wanna make sure people's passwords expire every like 180 days, just to make sure that nobody can guess passwords too easily. Another thing is simply adding mixed case numbers, symbols, and con passwords can make your passwords literally millions of times harder to guess, which is one of the most common ways that people will break in is by just guessing passwords. If you just had something like space rex as your password, all lowercase, they only have to go through different words and put them together to guess. It's called a dictionary attack. But if you had something like one ampersand, space rex with S and R capitalized, that password 
is going to be so much harder to brute force into because instead of them just having to guess a bunch of words, all lowercase, they now have to involve all the random keys on the keyboard, which makes guessing passwords just so much harder. All right, there's just one more that I nearly missed, and that is to use the inbuilt security center on Synology NAS. I'm planning on going over this in an entire video, and once that's out, I will leave that in a link in the description below. All right, well, that's all I've got for you. If you follow all those security practices, your Synology is going to be so much harder to break into. And remember, the biggest thing about security is just not being an easy target. Most of the time when people are hacked into, it's because of just silly, stupid things that got through, such as having a default admin username and password that everybody could just guess. It's those things that make NASA's really easy targets. But if you make sure to cut all of those out and stay up to date with different security vulnerabilities and are able to disable them when needed, you can effectively use your NAS outside of your home network as it, your own truly personal cloud while still being able to sleep at night. All right, well, I hope that was helpful. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.